Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a greeting card in Microsoft PowerPoint. And this is just using the greeting card that just has a front side and a back side. It is not one that you open, you flip open on the inside. So it'll have a front image and then it'll leave a space on the back side so you can write whatever you choose to write, okay? All right, so here we are in Microsoft PowerPoint. And right now this is set at an eight and a half by 11, but we're gonna change our uh, canvas size or our slide size. So you're gonna select design in the menu here. You'll select design. You're going to come over to the right and select slide size and choose custom slide size. And we're going to make this a width of five and a height of seven. And we're going to leave it in the portrait position and then click OK. Then you're going to ensure the fit. So now you have a slide size here of five, five by seven. The next thing we're going to do is click on our slide here on the far left and select layout. So if you have anything that looks like this on your slide, all you have to do is click the slide and just select layout and blank, and it'll make your slide blank. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna locate an image that we wanna work with. So I'm gonna go to insert picture online. I'm not doing an online picture. I don't know why I selected that. Insert <laughs> this device, and I'm going to select an image from my desktop. All right, so. I'm going to go with this image. Now, the image comes in super large, but we want to make this small enough so we can add words to it. So what I'm going to do is just bring it down a little bit and just move it over to the left. And all I did was just click on the handle here on the right. That will allow you to make your image smaller or larger. And it will also keep your width and height proportion. You never want to drag from the left or the right side because then your image is going to be distorted. Okay, so I'm just going to click on undo here in the top left corner. And we're going to put our image right there. And then we're going to um, add a shape to this. Now we're going to add a shape because I want this to be where you can come in and you can change this green card on the fly anytime you want to whatever color background you want to and not by having to just work with the, the background of the slide so what we're going to do is go back to the menu and select insert and we're going to select a shape we're just going to choose a rectangle and then i want you to click and drag all the way over your entire slide so i'm going to click and drag all the way down to the bottom until i cover up the entire slide and then I'm going to right click on my mouse and select send to back. And that just puts your slide in the background and your image in the for forefront, okay? So now I want you to click shift on your keyboard and click one time on your image. And now you have your image and your shape selected together. And you're going to right click your cursor and select group. And now you have one cohesive, okay, maybe I didn't click my image. I thought I had it. Let me go back here. Group. Okay. So there we go. I did have it. I must have just clicked on the image by itself. Okay. So now we have one cohesive. I don't know why in the world this thing keeps moving like that but you should have one cohesive um, image now, which is your background and also your image, okay? So what we're going to do now is with this like this, we can go in and we can add text. So we're gonna go insert, we're gonna come over to the far right, right up under Acrobat, and we're gonna select text box. 
and we're gonna put a text box here you just click and drag and we're gonna say it's your big day okay just like that it's your big day we can move that over just a little bit and then we can change this to whatever color we would we would like so I'm gonna change this to white so I'm just gonna highlight my text and then I'm gonna come right underneath the slideshow and come down to where you see this little a with a little white um, color underneath it and we're gonna select that drop down arrow and we're just gonna choose white now just like we changed the color you can also come here and you can change the font to whatever font you so choose to work with and normally I start at the top, but I'm gonna go down to the bottom and see what I find. Now you may not have the same fonts that I have, and that may be because I upload a lot of fonts from what the font and other sources. Also Creative Fabrica, so I do upload a lot of fonts. So you may not have the same fonts that I have, but I'm gonna use Yellowtail. I think that's kind of cute. And I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Maybe like that and I don't want your capitalized I don't know what I was thinking when I did that okay and then we're gonna take and I'm gonna center this so right underneath record you're gonna have your left align center right align and justify we're going to click on center and it's going to center your words within that shape or that text shape okay now i'm going to insert another text box and you could use the same text box it's totally up to you you could copy that one but i'm just going to say insert text box and then i'm going to drag down and i'm going to put a text box here and i'm going to say let's Go for a ride on the town and celebrate. And you can type whatever you like, guys. You do not have to put what I'm typing. All right, let's go for a ride on the town and celebrate you. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to center our text. Just by going back underneath your record. And click that center icon and I'm going to change the sizing so let me see what size I want to make that I'm going to go about right there which is a 28 and then I'm also going to change that to white and I'm also going to go and make that the same text yellow tail okay so now we have it's your big day let's go for a ride on the town Gonna bring that down just a little bit looking good so far all right all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to just click on the um, the shape itself and we're gonna come over to format picture we're gonna click on that first little icon which is your feel and we're going to say solid feel. Now it changes to white, but that's okay. We're going to change that. And you can make this whatever color you so choose. I'm going to go to more colors. And then we get this little thingy here. I'm going to go with, let's see what the blue will look like. It may be a clash of the that color blue may be a clash of the car part in the back so i'm going to hit okay and now you can see i'm going to move this over because my shape is my image is going outside of my shape and i don't want that so i'm going to move that over so that these line up okay so now we have a light blue background you can make it whatever color you like now what we're going to do is we're going to take and you want to 
click on everything that you didn't select initially. So I'm clicking my two text boxes and then the big rectangle shape. And I'm going to right click my cursor and I'm going to say group. And what that's going to do is now, again, we have one cohesive card with our image, our background, and then our words, okay? Now, the good thing about this, guys, is now you've set up a greeting card that you can change and do whatever you like with it without having to start over. And I'm going to show you. So now I'm just going to right click my cursor and say duplicate slide. And now I'm going to come down to the second slide. And if I wanted to change this background to another color, all I have to do is to just click the shape itself, come back over to fill, solid fill. Remember, it's always going to go back to that white color, and that's fine. I need to make that a little bit smaller. And then you can select whatever color, again, that you want to work with. Now, you can use eyedropper if you want to take a color from your image. So I selected eyedropper. And now when I lay my little ink pen on any of the colors, it'll show me the color in a little square box, as you can see here. And then I can choose that color just like that. I'm going to move this over because it's on my, on my car. There we go. So you can make it whatever color you want without starting over. You can come in and you can change this text to whatever you want it to say. It doesn't have to say this. And I'm going to show you how easy it will also be just to change this image. So if I wanted to change the image, I could just click the image. You don't want to click here. You want to make sure the image has those little um, shows that it's selected. And then we're going to right click. We're going to say change picture. And you're going to find wherever the picture is that you want to change it to. I'm going to go back to my desktop. And let's see. Let's go with this one. Insert. See how easy that was? I didn't have to start all over. I just changed the picture by selecting the picture. I could also click on the background and change the color here as well. Let's see what we did here. Let's go to eyedropper again, and let's go with this kind of light pink, pinkish color there. And then you could change this text to, oops, didn't mean to do that. You can change this text to whatever color. It doesn't have to be white any longer. You can change it to black. You can change it to blue. You can change it to whatever color you want. Basically, you have your design all ready to go, okay? The other good thing is you can do a gradient. I'm going to duplicate this slide again. You can do a gradient on your background. So you just basically click your rectangle. You're going to come back over to your fill, and this time we're going to select gradient fill, okay? So... I had a gradient already in there. It's going to automatically pick up the colors from my gradient, but you could change this to whatever colors you want. So here you have gradient stops. There's four of them. And all I have to do is just click on the gradient stop, select the color, and then I can choose colors. I'm selecting eyedropper. I can choose colors from my image. And this way, I'm going to the second gradient stop, click on color, eyedropper. And I'm going to select another color from my image. I'm going to add a little bit of white in there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to select that very last gradient stop. And I'm going to get another color from my image. Let's see. There we go. And then you could go back in. And like I said, you can always play around with your text color. But the good thing is, guys, all your work is done. All you're doing is changing up colors based on what you need, um, so on and so forth. You're not having to start over, okay? Um, you could also take, I'm going to right-click and duplicate again. And I'm just going to move this one up to the top. All right. I'm going to take and just insert a new slide. And on that new slide, I'm going to go back to my menu and select Insert picture, and this time I'm going to select online picture.
All right, let me click off. Sometimes this thing doesn't load right. So give me one second. There we go. You always want to get this search box in that top right underneath online pictures. If you don't, then you know it's not loading correctly. So I'm going to type in confetti. And this is just for your searching online for, you know, whatever kind of background images you might want to use. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click on insert. And the reason I'm doing this on a blank slide is because I don't want to interfere with what I have going on here. I hope this works. Sometimes the online pictures can act kind of fluky. All right, there we go. And Microsoft PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do, sometimes this will come in with the creator's um, name at the bottom. All you would have to do is just click on it and delete it. Because if you don't, that that name or whatever text is at the bottom is going to be in your design, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click and say copy. And then I'm going to take this image right here and I'm going to click on the rectangle shape and I'm going to come here and click on the fill icon and I'm going to select this option for picture or texture fill and I'm going to select clipboard. Because what I did is I took that background and I added it to my clipboard. Now, this one is going to be a little bit hard for you to see your, um, your text. Let me get a different one. Yeah, that one is super, super duper going to be super duper hard to see because of the, the color. Let's see if we can get it to show here. Yeah, that background is just too, it's too, that blue color is not working for me. All right, so let's go back, insert picture, online picture. But this kind of gives you a feel for how you can change that background. I'm showing you how to do a solid feel, how to do a gradient feel, and now I'm going to show you how to add a background using online pictures. So let's see, we want something kind of light. Let's try this one. Okay, so sometimes you'll get that with these online pictures. You just go back and search again. I don't know if it's where the developer or the creator of that image is no longer offering that image via PowerPoint. Not really sure, but I just keep playing around until I get one. All right, I'm going to pause here for a second and I'm going to locate one and I'm going to come back. All right, here's one. And this is a good example to show you. And that's because the creator's information is here at the bottom. So you want to make sure that you always just click on those and delete them. If you don't, it's going to show up in your final product, okay? So now we have this little bit of confetti, and I still went to insert online pictures, and then I found one that it took. So we're just going to click on this to copy it. And we're going to go back down to this bottom one here, and we're going to select picture or gradient fill and clipboard. All right, so I wasn't actually on my shape here. So we're gonna go back and there we go. I actually did the background background. I'm gonna right click that and put that back on white. So you always wanna make sure that you are on the actual rectangle itself and not on the background of your slide, okay? So now we have that confetti in here. And again, we can change this to whatever color we so choose. I'm going with blue this time, but go with something that makes mm -hmm. sense so that you know your you can read the text on the card. 
and like you can see that there's like that little pink back there I can move this up a little bit so that it's not compromising my it's I can move that just a little bit okay all right so this is how you can go in and create a greeting card really really easy this is a five by seven um, you can see that I showed you how to do a gradient background I've shown you how to go in and search Microsoft online pictures and we use confetti and change the background we also have a solid background and then we change the image from this image to this image just by clicking on the image and right clicking and saying change picture now I do recommend that when you change the picture you try to keep the same orientation so if you used a portrait image then use another portrait image or if you used a um, landscape image then you go with the landscape image and what I mean by that guys is when you go to insert picture and you select the device these are in the portrait position you can see that they're shorter on the top longer on the bottom these are landscape they're longer on the top and shorter on the bottom so this is portrait this is landscape now it doesn't mean that you can't choose a landscape picture what's going to happen is that if i was using portrait and now i choose landscape you're probably going to have to do a little maneuvering okay i didn't select change picture but you're probably going to have to do a little bit of maneuver maneuvering I can't talk today so I'm gonna say change picture this device I'm just gonna show you what that's gonna look like and I'm gonna choose a picture that's going in the landscape insert and so you can see how that doesn't look as nice okay now if you had this going in the, if you had the greeting card going in the orientation the orientation was landscape then this would be perfect but because we're using uh, portrait you want to try to stick with portrait images otherwise it's not going to look as nice okay so anytime you do something in Microsoft PowerPoint that you didn't mean to do you just go back up to the top left this is your undo and select that and you see it brought our image right back to where we needed it to be. Now, to print this out, all I would have to do is just go, and let's say I wanna use this one, okay? So I'm just going to click it and say, save as picture. And I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And I'm gonna call this one confetti. And it saves it as a PNG and save okay <clears throat> now when you save it as a picture it will allow you to take it into um, any other software programs that you want to but you can just go right here and print this out because our slide size is already a five by seven so if I wanted to print this out all I would have to do is just click on file print I'm going to select print current slide you can choose that by selecting the drop down arrow here print current slide if you don't select print current slide it's going to print all of those cards that I just showed you how to create and we don't want to do that and this is going to show you what your card is going to look like on your five by seven okay so then all you have to do I'm going to come to my printer properties and just make sure everything is good I'm using the HP um, office jet pro 7740 all right so I always choose best quality my paper quality I always want to make sure that it's on the right paper size I'm using the main paper tray I just leave it on plain paper I don't do cardstock or anything like that it works perfectly and then you just go okay and what you're going to do is you're going to size your greeting card down not size your greeting card but size the inside of your printer you want to change it to a five by seven and that's just basically m maneuvering um, the paper size so that the paper size will be you know you can slide your greeting card right in and it'll print out without thinking it's a big sheet of paper okay so everything is good here you click on OK and then you would be ready to print this out and um, have your greeting card that all you need to do is just slide in your envelope now I buy the greeting card and envelopes from I normally get them from Walmart you can also get them at Michaels and Joann's 
Um, I'm sure you can get them online, but I always buy the little set that has like 10 uh, greeting, five by seven greeting cards and then the envelope to go with it. You can even find the matching envelopes and cards um, where they may have like a little design. I have one that has like some confetti already at the top. So really all I would need to do is just design the bottom part of it. Now, all you would need to do is just take and print this out. And then you have that backside where you can write something personal, okay? So this is just a five by seven greeting card that has a front side and a back side. It doesn't have a, it's not a, a, um, a folding card. So it doesn't fold in half and then you, you know, you design that way. It's just a front side and a back side only, okay? But yeah, so that is how you would do that, guys. Really easy, really quick. I can save this project file. Save as, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm going to save this to my desktop and I'm going to call it five by seven greeting cards. And this way, when I need to come in and do a five by seven greeting card, I'm already set up to where all I need to do is just print it out if this works. Or I can go in and again, change my picture, change my background. You can change the text to say something else because these are already ready for you to design or ready for you to print. If you need to print out more than one, you know, let's say it's going to be a, um invitation. You can go in and you can also make these invitations by changing this and say, you know, I got to learn how to type y'all. you're invited, okay? And then here, you can change this. Of course, I would definitely change the size, but let's say a 12, and this is where you can start, and I will put this on the left align, and this is where you can say, you know, fine, date, um, location, or let's say place, because that's smaller. And R S V P. You know, you could put all of that information right here, guys, and turn it into an invitation. And then once you make that out of an invitation, invitation, when you get ready to print it, you would just go file, print. And if you know that you're gonna need, let's say, 15 copies, you just go to copies and you know, just type in your 15. Okay, so this could also serve as your greeting card. I mean, your invitation. Okay, and very simple, very easy to do. Um, so hopefully that made sense. But again, I showed you how to start out with just inserting your image, adding a shape to it, grouping it together. After you group it together, you can add some text and then group that text along with the um, image and that way it's going to be just one cohesive piece, okay? And then I showed you how you can always click on just the, the shape itself and then come here and play around with the feel, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're on the shape and you're not on the background, okay? When you're changing the background of your image here. Um, and guys, if you wanted to add something else, let's say you don't want that space at the bottom, we can click on copy and paste. And you can put this down at the bottom and, you know, put whatever you want to put down there. I'm just going to put some dot, 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 dot. Okay. But you could add anything else that you want to put on this particular card, you know, um, to make it your own. Okay, because remember, you have now created this greeting card and it's free for you to do whatever you want to do to it. Just remember, if you add another um, text box or whatever, you want to select the text box and you want to click on your shape and right click and group it and make that now a part of everything else so that everything is cohesive. Okay, so that when you move this around, you know, your text is not sitting somewhere else, okay? 
So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, I will have a snapshot of this card um, as the um, front of this video tutorial. But that's how you can go in and create your own greeting cards in Microsoft PowerPoint. This is a five by seven. Um, and then, you know, design it out. And like I said, you could take this now because we saved it. I'm going to show you in a second here. So here we have Cricut Design Space. All we have to do is upload. If you don't have 5x7s already, you can upload that image that we saved to our desktop at WeConfetti. And you can bring that right into Cricut Design Space. All the designing has been done for you. The only thing you're going to do in Cricut Design Space is just print this out. Okay, so we're going to click. There's nothing to do here. We're going to click on Apply and Continue. And when it gets to the select upload type screen, you're going to select print, then cut image and upload. All right, so Cricut is acting crazy. Okay, let's try it again. All right, so now we have our image uploaded into Cricut Design Space. All we have to do is click on Add to Canvas here in the bottom right. Now it's going to come in probably larger than what we had in Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm going to show you how to downsize it. Okay. I'm pretty sure I clicked on the image, but stranger things have happened. There we go. All right. So when the image comes in, you can see it comes in super large. We're just going to click on the um, lock one time, and then we're going to type in a width of five and a height of seven. So it did bring in both of them, but there's your five by seven right there. And you do know that when you do it from Cricut Design Space, excuse me, um, all you have to do is click on make it. There's nothing else you need to do here because Cricut is going to print this out and then, well, not print it. It's going to send it to your printer and then it's going to put that black registration mark around it. And then you'll take and you'll take the printed copy, put it into your cutting machine and then Cricut will cut out the five by seven size for you. So if you only have the eight and a half by 11 card stock, still do this, but there's that black registration mark that tells Cricut that this is a print then cut. So this would go to your printer. It's gonna print out just like this with this black border around it. And then after it prints out, then Cricut, you'll put this, lay this whole sheet with the image on your mat and then Cricut will cut that out for you in a five by seven, okay? All right, guys, that is it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. This was basically to show you how to create a 5x7 design in Microsoft PowerPoint using the image of choice. And if you have any questions or comments, anything wasn't clear, then just please chime in in the comments and let me know. If you're currently in my Facebook group, Candoris is Freaking and Creative Craft, thank you guys so much for following me via Facebook. If you would like to join my Facebook group, it is, again, called Candoris is Cricket and Creative Crafters. And... It will be linked in the description of this video tutorial. Um, so all you have to do is agree to the Facebook group rules and we'll get you in. If you're currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I want to thank you guys so much for the love and support that you show via YouTube. 
And if you are seeing my video for the first time and you like my method of teaching, I have over 400 video tutorials on my YouTube channel. Just check the playlist. And, um, you know, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And you guys know my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have an amazing day. Bye.